<laughs> Hi, welcome to Detention, where we pretend to know what we're talking about when it comes to D&D. I am your host, Tristan, new character, new voice. To my left, we have Sam, character psychology. And to my right, we have tragic backstory, Brandon. It's a good twofer right there. Yeah. 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 Two, four, one. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. So today we're going to be uh, talking about role-playing itself. Um, and I think this the overall arching thing that we're going to talk about here is that there's no real wrong way to role play. We're going to talk about that for <laughs> well, sure. Well, In the words of Rhett I mean, when you're, let's you're, talk about if that. You're, <laughs> if you're attempting to role play, there's no real wrong way of going about it. Uh, if it, you're attempting, it, goes, it may go against what the DM wants to happen. It may make everyone mad at you. But as far How as... How to isolate yourself and not have friends. Yeah. So as far as, you know actually wanting to role play there are kind of the different avenues to go into there is the uh almost narrating what your character kind of goes on the on the low end where you're not you know you, you're not doing anything other than like uh xanthar goes and hits door right <laughs> all the way up to the full-on like living your character. i am xanthar <laughs> smite ye door <laughs> like showing up in in garb in costume with props and speaking only as the character um and then there's for a lot of people, the happy medium tends to be kind of in the middle of those two. Um, Using I statements and explaining what you do and then having dialogue as the character, but also going, maybe we shouldn't do that. And like coming back into it. Now, uh, and this is where I'm saying, like, as far as any of those ranges go, that's where there's no real bad way to attempt to roleplay. Because when it comes to it, the, the big difference, I think, a lot of players going into roleplaying that have a challenge is separating their character from themselves. And this is where we've seen a lot with, uh, when we, we introduced Leon to, uh, or Zeke, I should say his real name, uh, <laughs> into playing D&D with us. Uh, again, check out Roll Call. Uh, Zeke is our uh, assassin rogue. Second rogue. Our second rogue, and he was very new to this. Uh, he pretty much just started right out the gate with brand new things, and he was struggling as far as figuring out where he began or where he ends and the character begins. And to some degree, with our characters, we are doing things where our characters are very much parts of ourselves. And uh, but that's where you have to differentiate between what you do and what your character would do. Like Tristan wouldn't blindly jump over a wall. And not check what's on the other side. Correct. While Soren, on the other hand, jumps over walls and squishes horses. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> that only happened, like, once. Right. So, I guess, Sam, <laughs> let's start with how... when it, We'll kind of go over how we each kind of go into role-playing aspects. So, Sam, okay. let's start with you. How do you find best to role-play when it comes to D&D? So, uh, as the resident introvert, um, I don't get super into role-playing. Um, I mean, there's... I'm certainly getting a little bit better at it, but so I tend to be more of the type of player that out of, you know, dialogue, I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to try this or I'm going to do this, but I don't really get into like, Cal is going to be all like super cool and, you know, I don't get super into it. But then, you know, also in dialogue, I sort of talk like Cal would, but not with like a silly voice or anything stupid <laughs> like that. How dare you. Uh, um, but I think that also comes down to the character that I'm playing. You know, Cal is very much like just all of the worst parts of me just like multiplied by 100 mm -hmm. whereas with like cool knife tricks so yeah with cool <laughs> knife tricks uh whereas like another character that i have in mind you know is very much not like me and is very much like outgoing and chipper and like super friendly and like that one's got an accent and that one's got a voice and like special little things but you know so it's, it kind of comes down to what character you're playing too right. but and i would say i'm very much like more of a passive uh, role playing, right? Person. And I mean, you make a good point of like you know, whereas Cal is like the worst parts of you dialed up to eleven, and and this will sound like a, an odd sentence for some people, or as a reference, I should say, not sentence. Um, when like, and this is, and of course, it's coming from my background. When people talk about creating a good like wrestling persona for pro wrestling, the ones that tend to stick the most are the ones that are the person's own personality just dialed up to eleven. Like a good a good reference for someone like uh, that people might understand would be like Stone Cold Steve Austin. Um, world known, and he's known as, you know, this, you know, badass beer drinking, like, stunner and people left and right, where he's just the good old redneck. Um, in real life, he's very similar to that, but when he's doing the character, it's just him dialed yeah. up to 11. So that's where you'll see a lot of characters that people begin with, uh, such as with my character, Sorn, very much like Hal, it's very much a part of me just dialed up to 11. Yeah. 
And I feel like as a new player, that's one of the easiest ways to ease oh, yourself yeah. into role oh, playing. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, because for me, I thought it was going to be this big struggle, but then, you know, there are certain things with Cal that I identified with, like her distrustfulness, her like sort of just like F the world attitude and this sort of like drunken behavior. Like those were things about myself that I identified with. And then just sort of like, I was like, okay, how can I make this even worse? Right. And just sort of push that. <laughs> um, which can lead to its own issues, but yeah. So and, and so then so you would probably put yourself lower on that the the beginning spectrum I put in as far yeah, as that. Yeah, at, at least, least right with, now. At least right now, and with, at least with your with this main character, character. Yes, now because I think character the next be character is going to be much more different. <laughs> right. So I know for myself, I tend to be a little bit more in the middle because I tend to change my voice for the character when it's actually speaking in dialogue. <laughs> um, I tend to say like the I'm going to do this. Um, but you'll then this as a DM, you see this uh, with some of us for sure. Where we go, all right, Sorn's gonna do this, and then I roll my own eyes at that character because I'm like, and everyone's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, I wouldn't do this. Sorn would, and this is what, <laughs> again where I kind of put myself kind of in that middle spectrum where I, I definitely go to some degree out. Um, and I because te- again, a lot of this is with us still being relatively new. You know, we only have a couple of years under our belt, and that sounds silly to say that we're new. It's still a couple of years, but when it comes it takes- to like D and D, it takes a lot of time. Mm-hmm. So, as far as role playing goes, I'm definitely kind of in that middle where I'm pushing the boundaries of trying to role play. Um, but there's still plenty I could, you know, do more. I guess. Um, so then that brings us kind of. Uh, to you, Brand, with uh, your hmm. decade or more under your belt. I do no role play. I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, not at all. <clears throat> no, I am. <laughs> I am. If we have the spectrum from little role play, medium role play, I am that upper end of that spectrum. Yes. Where I make a character, I think about their entire role play, like how I'm going to play them. Mm-hmm. Like in the one shot, Ren Goldenrod, I am not like that, but Ren is definitely like. Was definitely like the more like business oriented, uh, rude to people, but yet um, poignant and like had some uh, class to him, and was more critical thinking in situations than I personally would have been. Mm-hmm. But that's one of the joys of playing a game where I'm not actually fighting a dragon or anything. It's like I can think about what I want to do. Um, I don't go full hog and do like costumes and everything, which it's fine if you do. If your table wants to do that, go for it. I just think that's a lot of money for me to get really sweaty in clothes. Well, I think I think to some degree that's where you can start making a little bit of compromises as far as articles that are similar or mm-hmm. things like that. Because I know whenever I play our regular campaign, I tend to try and find either my barbarian shirts or I you know I bring out my Viking shirts with his background. I mean, even now I'm wearing uh, yep. you know the Viking compass. Um, you know, it's small things like that where yeah. we've also talked about uh, small props from like the campaign that we're currently in that people can bring. Um, to really relate them to their character and, and make that a more cohesive, like, world in right. your own mind since it's all I theater mean, of the mind. Yeah, even down to the point where, and Sam and I were just talking about this the other day, when I tend to play, I tend to like to play with specific dice for specific characters. And it sounds ridiculous, and to a lot of people it is, such as Brandon. Brandon's like, what the heck? But It's fine, it's just... I'm more probability would dictate that it doesn't matter which thing I roll, probability will always be well, a one. In one but this chance. is where it comes down to the role but playing. But nobody <laughs> gets dice for probability; they get them for the shiny, sparkly colors. All right. <clears throat> so and, that, and that's the sparkles point. Sparkles theme doesn't matter, <laughs> right? And that's the point. This is where it comes down to a little bit to the role playing aspect of like, like I'm not convincing myself that I'm going to have more of a chance with more dice. I'm telling myself that, okay, if I'm playing Soren, I have my blue and my gray dice because I usually like to have, like, two pairs that are ready in case I do get frustrated with one pair. And, you or know, you need to roll a critical hit and roll multiple at the same time. Right. And, or, you know, with, like, the one shot we did recently, it was, you know, I was playing, you know, a turtle person. So I was like, okay, here's my green dice, you know. And <laughs> for other ones, I'm like, okay, but my dice tend to be a little bit more geared towards what I'm doing. See, I kind of do that too. Like when I when I sit down before a game and I'll pick out like five sets of dice, I'll usually color coordinate them. Mm-hmm. Like last game I played with like a bunch of blue dice. Like before that I think it was blue and green. Before that it was pinks. Like right. So but I have like a bajillion dice, so I can do that. So it, 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 the reason why I bring this up is if that helps you get immersed and helps your role play, yes. do it. Do it. So yeah, so that's what what it comes down to. A lot of if you're looking to kind of push the push, if you're on lower on the spectrum and you want to get higher up with like the full on role play, there are small things you can do. 
Um, whether it's choosing, like, you know, getting a pair of dice, and of course this is at your own leisure of buying more things. If you want to get a pair of dice that you feel fit your character more, um, with there's so many types of dice out there and oh, you can God. even find them in other games like this is where you always see it where you know you go to like a you know a comic store or something where there's like oh pathfinder dice have themes and like oh here's the call of cthulhu ones and that'd be great for a warlock who's made a pact with the old one or you yeah. know there's uh ones that uh we've looked into that would be funny for uh one of your camp uh one, one of your campaigns for your character there's a like curse of the mummy set that would be egyptian yeah. theme for a character mm. that you have in that um so, like, dice are a nice, simple way of doing it, whether it's you're wearing shirts that you go, this, this is my D&D shirt to help kind of signify to you, small trickiness, if you have, like, a... Uh, when we first started playing D&D, we made a joke and we bought props. Uh, I just thought those were fun. Yeah, we had... Well, because it was people, <laughs> like, we had the... Because what was Sean for that? He was he was a sorcerer, wasn't he? I think so. Sorcerer, we had, a, like, an elf uh, rogue... rogue. Uh, Either way, Cleric, we, we bought yeah. up. We, we we saw on sale was like a, a medieval dagger because yeah. it was around Halloween, and we bought that for his character just to hold because his character had a dagger. So and so, there's definitely small things you can do to do that. But then you know, at one point, uh, you know, props aren't going to get you so far as far as a feeling goes. Um, and this is where you can kind of figure out what you want to do as far as further putting yourself in that yeah. role play. I mean, and there's there's different things you can do to you know get yourself kind of in the mindset. Um, Obviously, I'm not saying, like, get smashed and then live stream, but, you know, maybe if you have, like, a small glass of Jack, you know, <laughs> to kind of get you in that drunken mind stream. Detention does not endorse drinking. Roll call LSE does not endorse getting alcoholic <laughs> beverages. But, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, there's, like, okay, so I've had some people ask me, like, hey, you know, you're an introvert. I know you're not one of those people to, like, put yourself out there, and yet here you are doing this, like, show that's, like, on YouTube and on Twitch. Like, how do you deal with it? And I'm like, well, first off, I don't deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> I just it let just it happen. happens. <laughs> <I> um, <laughs> but you know, there. But there's other things. You know, whether it's just like chilling out. You know, listening to like some music to like get yourself into character. Like mm. whatever that could be. Um, you know, you can make a warlock pack if that you know helps <laughs> you get in the mindset. But there's there's other different things you can do outside of buying props or buying dice. Um, right. You know, and just kind of help yourself get so the moment. The, I would say the core of it is finding out who the character is that you're playing. Yeah. And one of the things that I've noticed over the years that really help when it comes to character development is something that you've done a lot and you've helped me with, is, and this is from your background as a writer, uh, is essentially fill out a, one of those old you know, oh. questionnaires uh, to help kind of figure out that character's personality. It seems ridiculous. It seems really stupid, but one of those, like, MySpace ones that, like... <laughs> That just asks you like a shit ton of questions. Like everything from your favorite color and food to where do you see yourself in five yeah. years. I mean, I've got a master list um, of like a character sheet. And anytime I ever think up a new character, I fill one of those out. And this is like, I mean, this is like a freaking 10 page Word document that right. I sit there and it's got like 50 lines per page and I answer questions. And it just sort of helps me figure out, okay, this is exactly who this person is. I know their date of birth. I know the time, you know, I know where they were born. I know what like the, what food they hate the least. Like, and it's little things that can help you incorporate for example cal hates birds which i also hate birds but it, i mean my some of my other npcs don't mind birds they're like whatever right um, the bird. you know or like oh i mean either way it, it helps help incorporate. gives you more of an idea of the character you're playing because with any character they're going to evolve over time and then whatever character you have will also be affected by dm choices yeah like if you leave something out your dm uh is free to at that point to kind of go <laughs> <I'm> talking about <laughs> is to kind of go in to alter some of those things yeah because, like, and just as an example with the, uh, our current campaign, my character, you know, I was like, oh, I was banished from home, and I gave him kind of free reign to do something with it, and Brandon came and went, all right, so uh, after you were banished, you were taken into a town, you now have a new father figure that you don't know about until we show up at that town. I'm like, yep, there you go now. And I'm like, <laughs> wait, I have to figure this out now. I have to figure this out? Yeah, you should have written it. <laughs> and if you're really not sure about your character, I mean, it, yeah. you can always sit down with your DM and mm -hmm. hash things out. Or, you know, I mean, I trusted you enough to let you hash things out for my character without even knowing what the hell I was getting myself into. Which, by the way, for me is fine. Like, because I don't care. I'm not. I'm not going to micromanage this character. But... Um, you know, it can lead to some interesting things, you know? Right. Now, we, you and I, Brandon, we tend to have a bit of advantage on some things because we come from a theater and improv background. 
Um, <laughs> what, whatever do you mean? <laughs> exactly. Um, so, I mean, in that regard, we do seem to have a little bit of a leg up. And not, does, even if you don't, there's not to say that you can't improve upon these skills for sure. This is definitely something that it takes time no matter what. We I, like we mentioned that before. Like Even with Sam and I having a couple of years under our, uh, under our belts as far as experience goes, that we still consider ourselves really technically new to the game yeah. of D&D. Whereas even Brand, you would never even say with the amount of time you have under your belt that you're an expert. Ever. But I am. Uh, you could, if you have to break it down like new, learned, intermediate, professional, expert, master, I'm probably like closer to professional. I'm like working my way up that skill right. tree. Yeah. <laughs> Still not there. And I mean, because a lot of it is when it comes to role playing, everything that you have in your head can change the moment you start playing. Right. Yeah. Um, and that was the case that I definitely found with when we started playing this main campaign. It really changed because I went into this going, okay, Soren's going to be this giant Goliath Viking character and go into this and be a little bit more of like the classic barbarian. And we started playing, and then I found myself doing things that were not that. He became much more, and we joke about it, that he's like the Thor from the Marvel Universe, where he's a bit more friendly, he's a bit more uh, charismatic, despite yeah. the fact that his char- charisma is kind of crap. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, it is. It's bad. <laughs> I won't say it's bad, but it's bad. It's bad. It's bad. I can uh, say that. <laughs> you've seen the stats. <laughs> but, um, so, what uh, you have to kind of roll with that, uh, no pun intended, with... Uh, how you start playing is how you're going to be reacting. And just kind of try to keep some of those things in mind as you go. Um, Side note is, if you're playing a game and you, everyone else at the table is role-playing at a higher level than you, don't feel pressured to try and step up to the level if it's going to make you uncomfortable. Yes. If your DM is trying to push you to that, let them know that you are not comfortable with that fully yet. And try and sit down and figure out a way to take the steps. Like... Ask them if they need like if they need help with getting into character for talking. Um, how, figure out like tiny ways they can change their voice or way they can change their inclination or their yeah. like delivering whatever can marginally progress the mm-hmm. the scale if they want. Right. Yeah. Then you can do that. Right. Um, Voices is a whole thing that we'll talk about in a second. Oh, but yeah. yeah, when it comes to it, much as we've always talked about, a lot of it comes down to you as a player, what you want out of D&D. Yeah. This is where, again, you can always talk to your DM. You want to find a group that you kind of work well with. And, of course, finding a D&D group is so hard in the first place, like to the point where it's such a meme. Uh, <laughs> that already is daunting enough. But you want to, ideally, uh, like we've talked about finding a DM that works best for you. But you right. also want to be in a group that works for you, especially as a new player. If you're finding people are demeaning the way that you play, you're not in the right group. Yeah. Um, there, that's why there's things like Roll20 and Discord and stuff like that to help you find a group that you feel better with. Because, uh, I mean, you want to be able to play even at a basic level of just typing things out uh, without people coming after you. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because yeah. uh, a lot of this is coming down with the, to the character. Um, but, yeah, so voices. Voices is a whole big thing where you can help get you really into a character and this is where it it's a great deal of change again with brian and i being you know voice actors we tend to be able to play into that really hard whereas you're not sam and but that's there's no problem with that i mean cal already is similar enough to you yeah but even with other characters that you play if you wanted to wanted to do a voice you could if you yeah. don't want to with the group that we play with, nobody judges you for that whatsoever. Yeah. Well, and you know, there's something to be said about that too. Because I, I had sat down, or I don't know if you remember, and, mm. and sat there for a little while and was like, man, what would Cal sound like? You know, what would she sound like this? Would it be like this? And, you know, I just sort of decided, well, Cal would probably sound like how I sound like. Mm-hmm. You know, not exactly like classy or like super feminine or like, you know, right. whatever. I know. She wouldn't really have like an yeah. accent. But whereas like other characters that I thought of, you know, they would... They would have some sort of accent, or right. you know, it feels a bit more natural for them. Right. I mean, because you and I had talked about this uh, as far as character voice, because you were really looking for a voice for Cal, and you were like, is it changed? Because when I play Soren, I change my voice, and with almost every character that you play, Brandon, I, you change uh, yours. Yeah, well, I'll talk, once you guys are done, I'm going to talk about voices as a DM, because that's a whole thing. That's that a whole other <laughs> That's I'll, a whole other basket I'll put of that in. I'll put that in when you, you guys are done. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, voices can be a number of things, whether you just want to use your normal voice, or even if you're on lower on that spectrum as far as role-playing, just telling, you know, when you describe your character to your table and your DM, 
putting it in notes that your your character's voice is different. If you're playing like a halfling and you don't feel comfortable doing like a, a higher pitched tone or something more cutesy, or depending on the character, or if you don't have, if you're like, oh, I, you know, you could be a you know twelve year old female. And you're like, I'm playing a male dragonborn. You're like, Can't, all right, you're not gonna be able to sound like them, but, <laughs> but you can very well put, uh, you know. Uh, you know, describe the, tell, way the voice. Yeah, yeah tell your yeah. group how they sound. Like I, let's say I don't want to do a holistic. Uh, if I'm a player, I don't want a holistic French accent mm-hmm. um, for whatever character I'm playing. So I say everything they say is with a French. Um, like at the end, it'll end like the French, like with that at the end of sentences. And so then that will give people in their minds, even if you're not saying it, right. as long as yeah. they keep that in their head, they'll go okay. They said it like that. So knowing how the French sound, it's just an example, like to will help immerse them with your character more. Right. And this is definitely something that you can always bring up as you continue to play. Like, like uh, I was like, oh, uh, Twig, my halfling druid, has a you know higher-pitched, friendly voice. And as you play, you're like, Twig's uh, kind voice comes ringing out of nowhere. And, it's just, and like kind of reminding yeah. group as it goes, even if you don't use that tone. Yeah. Like, let's say my natural tone is this, and I'm playing a halfling named Twig with a higher-pitched voice. Like uh, Twig's friendly, high voice comes from out of nowhere and says, Hello. And like and you do your best if you want, but uh, this is definitely where you can communicate with your group without having to be able to do a voice to going upwards to only speaking in that voice all the time. I think it also is helpful, like, to listen to your own natural voice yes. and to try to play off of what comes naturally to you. Like, for example, southern accents come really naturally to me. They're super fun. So <laughs> it's, Hang out, yes, they are. it's a lot easier for me to transition into something like a southern accent as opposed to something like a fancy or a A hoity-toity English. I mean, so sometimes just sort of playing off your own inflection and off the own tone of your voice just can make it a little easier. Something that definitely helps with that is something uh, which everyone hates when they realize it happens. The voice that you hear when you speak is not the same voice that people hear in their ears. This is where whenever you leave a message and you hear it later and you're like, oh, man, that's what I sound like. There is a big discrepancy because of the acoustics in your own head you hear something. So if you're if you if you're looking to work on a voice, definitely, and it's going to be cringy, and you're going to hate it. Record your voice, whether it's just a voice recorder, a camera, what have you, or even working with someone. If you know, like, hey, this is the goal I'm trying to get to. Am I hitting this exactly, or whatever? It's definitely going to be weird. But if you're looking to develop a voice, that's great. Accents, as you said, southern accents, and you talked about French accents, and everything. Accents are an easy way to change a character's whole thing. Um, and this is the stuff that I've picked up uh, with my puppeteer background as well. Uh, I've taken classes with people like Jeff Dunham and stuff like that where they're talking about developing a character. Sometimes it's just changing your tone from your natural tone, a higher or lower versus your normal speak. Changes it, uh, accents, uh, certain thing like speed is a great deal. Um, and this is where you can also emphasize your character's body type and stuff like that. If you have a big hulking character, speaking at a lower pace tends to make it feel a little bit more real. Or if you have like a fast-paced ranger who's all about speed, it's just speaking at a Can I fast? <laughs> yeah. Like, I gotta go hunt that thing real quick. I'm gonna go be right back. Okay, bye. <laughs> so, as a DM... This is where voice... <laughs> okay, so... Watch this video. Close your eyes, though. A barmaid comes up to you and says, hello, how are you doing? Another patron says, why are you going to them first? Someone else says, because they were here first. That all sounds just like me saying it to you, like I'm just walking around you. As a DM, it's hard to create a world and not put some sort of change on your normal voice. Mm -hmm. Because if you're having multiple NPCs interact with the party, Mm -hmm. you're going to be saying things and you need to, you won't want to be like, so-and-so says... So and so says, so and so says, because then that breaks up the natural discourse of the conversation. Yeah. Like when you guys talk, you guys don't have to go. Soren says, you just say, it. right? Because right. that's your the, you, the player. Voice. The player <laughs> is one person managing one voice at one time. Yes, the DM can manage anywhere from one, which is nice, <laughs> to thirty, thirty or more at one moment. <laughs> at one moment, if they have to deal with a large organized group. Now, um, that should be said that shouldn't say that if you can't do them, you can't be yes. a DM. It doesn't, I'm not saying that. It's just minor changes right. can dramatically impact if you're doing multiple here. You don't have to have like, 
Hi, my name's Gerald. Hello, my name is Reginald. And you don't have to have them do that. You can be like, my name's Gerald. My name's Reginald. And like, just minorly change it. Like, up pitch, down pitch. Even if that's all you have to do is up pitch, down pitch, not add any sort of voices. That's great. That still gives them the idea of character one, character two. Right. Because they're only looking at your face. You now, can't... even if those voices repeat over and over, if you seem to run into the same two voices in every bar you go into, that's fine because you're still trying to differentiate between the two characters speaking at one time. And this right? goes into DM description mm-hmm. and how the, their personalities and how each one of them, I guess, role plays in the scenario. So voices can overlap. You can have multiple voices. I do it. It's because it's... I'm only one person, and there are billions of people. <laughs> so some people are going to sound similar. You can't help that. So it's the easiest way to, to role play as a DM is to describe, mm-hmm. give them an idea of why they're there or who they are. And if you're only one person, use your own voice if you're not comfortable, or slightly change it. Right. At the bare minimum. Because then that gives you, an, the players, an idea of what they're doing, what they look like, in a different voice, so they know when the DM is talking mm-hmm. and when the character is talking. Right, and uh, and this is we'll, and we'll dive much more into it when it comes to when we do an episode on uh, being a DM or a dungeon master. Mm. Um, <laughs> a DM, essentially, the DM's job is to lay it out this world, and they're trying to get you to be a little bit more role playing into it. So, eat, but no matter where that spectrum is, if you're again much more like you with that heavy RP. Um, or, you know, because even when Sam begins to DM, she's done it where she's not as, you know, heavy into it. She's still trying to do, I guess, into, whether it's being super Still discreet. trying to find that flow. Yeah, that flow. My DM style or even there. if you're someone that does no real role playing, but let's just say you're as descriptive as possible and then trying to use certain, again, just slight tone shifts can change a great deal. Again, you don't have to have a thousand voices in your repertoire. But having it so that you are able to differentiate between like a higher tone, a lower tone, or even a slight accent, or speed. Or emotion. Or emotion. emotion. You channel emotion into your voice. Because there's a difference between like a character who's excited and a mm-hmm. character who's highly apathetic. Like, right. Even that can sort of, you know, set the stage. I don't know what stage. you're talking about. <laughs> I have no idea. And, and <laughs> you know what? That's a great point. Emotion alone tells a great deal when it comes to the voice. And I know we're talking a lot about voices. But, this but it's a good way to, at a table where you don't see things... You yeah, only yeah. have to like look at dice and hear and imagine. Yes, doing different emotions, different voices, different sounds, different things can bring it to life in your brain. Right. And as a DM, your whole thing is to lay out all the tools that you possibly feel comfortable doing to give your players the best chance to immerse themselves and role play in your world. Right. That's your job. So yeah. So the emotions are great because again, this is where we talk about doing the you know the the surveys essentially and trying to fine tune your character. You're going to know what emotion tends to be your character's default. Yeah. Where we talk about Kyle, her default tends to be kind of just apathetic and depressed. Um, so her tone tends to reflect that. Yeah. Where someone like Sorn tends to be very bold and brash. Brash. His voice tends to reflect that. Um, and then with characters that you have, like, uh, like Tondru and, uh... Mm, Tondru Lockfoot. He tends to be very, uh, mm. he's adventurous and, uh, in, uh, inquisitive, so his voice tends to reflect mm-hmm. that as well. Yes, he's very, <laughs> he's very curious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> God, I hate Tondru. No, 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 my name is Tondru Lockfoot. Oh, Go away. <laughs> Go away. We hate you. Whereas, like, if you were playing a character that was more grumpy all the time, like, mm. let's just say you you have someone playing, like, a retired soldier who's got sucked into this group. It's like, dang it, someone needs to be around here and protect the curtains. I was one year from retirement. <laughs> Too old for this shit. <laughs> I retired for a year and, I'm and back. I got bored. <laughs> I got pulled back. So, uh, yeah. yeah, so emotions deal a great deal with helping you find that voice. But a lot of it does come down to that character you're trying to tell their story of. Uh, this is where you can either go like go hog and uh, you know make a huge backstory. You know every intricate detail. You don't have to tell everyone every intricate detail de- detail until Here's it comes my nineteen up. page backstory. Yeah, you can <laughs> have <tell> you can <laughs> have that nineteen page backstory like loaded on your computer or something. Uh, so that but it helps you develop that character's yeah. everything. And this is where the quirky things like with the surveys that are like, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite food? Yeah, these are the kind of things that will help you. 
kind of figure out why. And you can ask you, you can even ask yourself why my character likes this thing. It's like, what's the character's favorite color? Blue. Like even if you just throw out an answer, yeah. it's like, okay, cool. Why is your character's favorite color blue? Uh, uh water. <laughs> water. And it very well could be like, well, water. Okay, why yeah. is it, why water? Was it will, you know, I why find... why water? Well, so for Chet, for example, initially I was gonna have his favorite color be orange because he likes the sunsets. But then I was like, well, why does he like the sunsets? And then I changed it to blue for the ocean. Well, why does he like the ocean? Because he's never seen the ocean. He's like, as far as I know, he's just lived in this like sort of middle world of like just landlocked. The stuff. Utah. Yeah, he's. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's the southern boy. Right. And again, um, this is where you'll start to find more and more things are different from you than the character. And right. this really, and like, you'll surprise My yourself. My favorite color, surprisingly, not blue. No. <laughs> but again, this is where, like, the more you deal with it, the more you'll surprise yourself on how much you can create a character with that's different from yourself. Yeah. As well as has similarities for, for the same reasons. Because people, there are going to be people that have multiple reasons that are the same for the same thing. Like, why does your father color green? I don't know. It just is. And the other person will be like, I don't know. It just is. And that's fine. Yeah. Um, and this is, but then you'll have things that are extraordinarily different. Whereas, like, like Soren, his favorite animal is a unicorn, um, and his reasons because it's the most battle ready steed that you can ride into battle. And it's, and you know, that, that's a great idea, Soren. Whereas mine is the uh, the colossal squid. It's like they are very different things. But what? with Soren's background, it makes the most sense because yeah. he's very much a combat focused uh, personality. Um, but again, this is where you'll surprise yourself, and the more you play with a character, the more you can uh, fine tune those things. Nah. So, well, go, go ahead. I was going to say, I think we should transition to good role play versus. I was bad actually going to bring up the same point because we there we have that. talked about the spectrum of role playing, mm. but not every role play is good, on the sense of. It could. It, it does not. I'm saying like bad is in like you're bad role playing. You're not good at being a different character. No, good and bad in the sense of playing the game, personal unity and character unity. Mm. How you role play a character changes everything. As as Sam made a joke at the beginning, you could be hated in real life for how you role play because mm. you can you can think well that's what my character do. A lot of people say a lot of, like people talk about there's. Playing your character and there's being chaotic stupid. Yes. Chaotic well, neutral. Chaotic raise your hand if you've ever been chaotic stupid. We all have. It, when you're starting... It happens. You're probably going to do something chaotic stupid. Like, the cl- the classic thing is... I'm not trying to be shame rogues. It's just the easiest thing to talk about chaotic stupid is... Attack us. The, the king is walking around. I'm going to steal the crown straight off his head. Like... No, that's chaotic stupid. Your, your role play, like, what's what my character would do? No. Yeah. It's what you want to do when you're saying your character would do it so you can do it. Right. Your character in real life would not go, I bet I could steal that straight off his head in front of all 50 he guards. He could think it. But he's not going to be dumb <laughs> enough to try in broad daylight. Right. Yeah. He, if he's a true rogue, if your character is the real person that you, you want them to be, mm. they're not going to be that stupid right. to try and steal it from... The, the their the crown's head without any sort of prep, out any sort of plan, without any sort of anything. Like there are multiple ways you could try and do it. That's right. perfectly fine. But for your level two rogue to be like, I'm gonna steal off the crown's the crown jewels yeah. off his head, that's chaotic stupid. Right. And I don't feel bad if I call you out for that <laughs> because you're if you, if if you or someone you know is like doing that and people are encouraging it, that's only going to plant the seed that they can do that always, right. and it will be right. it'll be funny maybe the first time, maybe the second time, hell, maybe even the third. But when you get into a consistent basis of a, a player and a character are role playing as the um, the meme lord, mm. as you want the person who is just doing for the jokes, doing it for that disrupts an entire campaign unless it's based around that. If that's the case, that's the DM's doing mm-hmm. that, but. Most games aren't going to be based on that. Most games are, if you try and do that, it will have a repercussion. Right. And then it'll fall back on your entire party. Right. Because this, I mean, because you brought up a good point as far as these are, and it's, it's going to sound kind of silly, but these are real people in this world. Now, that's, none of this means that you can't make dumb decisions that are fine. Right. Real people make plenty of right. dumb decisions. Yeah. You know, as far as, you're not going to be chaotic stupid if you're already drunk in a bar and someone goes, let me buy you another drink. And you're like... Woo! And then you get... You're not going to suddenly sober up and be like, no, I'm responsible, I'm stopping it too. I don't know you. 
Right. Please go away. No, if you were inebriated. You're like, free drink. If you're right. Yeah, I hand it over. Whether, whether that means you failed the con check next and you barf all over the floor, or right. it's a poison vial from a changeling assassin that you don't know. You're, it, that's a, that's a where you can make it. You your know. character would reasonably do it. It's within reasonable doubt yeah. is right. what your character do. Like with Sorn. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't. Un, he wouldn't reasonably go over to an old lady and go, "I want your money for this fancy thing," pop, and take it. Right now, Cal would reasonably see someone, maybe an old lady, but someone who's a little more affluent, who's being a who, who's a little borderline, and she'd be like, "He doesn't need all of that money," and then go take some because it, it makes sense for her character to try and. Work the streets right. because that's her backstory. That's her role play. Mm-hmm. While Sword wouldn't do that. Right. And this is where alignment kind of comes into play as far as helping you figure out what you're doing as a character. Yep. And uh, we haven't talked about alignments a whole great deal, but your alignment when you're making your character is a good way to kind of focus yourself. Where you are on that that dial between I'm the goody two shoes. If I smell something bad and stinky, I will exterminate it. Versus. I want to see the world burn and everything inside of it. I hate it. Right. So this is where, like, you can have a character who, I mean, Chaotic Neutral is the one that we uh, hear the most. Is the character that goes, I do what I want. Which is perfectly fine <laughs> as a character of, like, uh, saying that uh, you do what you want. That's fine. But that's still within reason. Your character, like, wouldn't go, I'm going to go fight this dragon because that's what my character wants to do. Like, if, well, they're, chaotic, it, but if they're Chaotic Neutral Bard mm-hmm. that was, like, trying to... You know, woo some lady. He wouldn't go. I'm gonna go by myself to fight a dragon because that makes sense. <laughs> like they wouldn't. Like I yeah. want to do it. Right. That's more of like if you're a uh, charismatic bard and you see both the uh, the city, um, you know, gutter uh, person or the royal princess. You'll hit on both of them because you're like, Psh, I just want to get some tail. You're, you're that bard can't make that. Can't like I do what I want. I'm gonna hit on them. It's like don't hit on them. They'll punch you. Like nah, it'll be fine. I'll be cool. And they get punched in the face. That's fine. That's a chaotic neutral decision. Chaotic stupid, like you said, is a rogue that goes. I see the king as he talks to me. He totally won't see me slink away and take the crown off his head. And like but this is where you can make that decision of my stealth is change, outrageous. Right, <laughs> changing. The, I mean, because even if you do that, this is where your DM is going to hit you. Your DM is yeah. going to be like blink, and then your rogue is gone. Go, where'd your friend go? So your stealth is great, but that doesn't mean he's an idiot. Yeah, like and that's you, the only thing people. Are like, Why stealth the way? How does he know? I don't know. Like four people are in front of him. He he did pass school, so he can go four, one, two, three. Wait. <laughs> right. And, the, you know, even if you roll a 20 for a sleight of hand to get the crown off his head, I mean, he's, he's gonna be- still going to go, huh, my head is for some reason about five pounds lighter. <laughs> also, someone's going to look at the crown, the king, and go, my lord, where's your crown? And they're going to be, he's going to be like, oh, dang, I've only talked to four people and one of them disappeared. <laughs> Dang so, it. And I mean, and this is where you can, you, even if you want to say that you make this, like, I want to steal the crown off the top of his head, you can have it be very much your character's thoughts. Where you and I have talked about Chaotic Stupid mm-hmm. and developing a character because I have a rogue that would be very much similar to that, which was uh, my Tabaxi uh, rogue, uh, Sardine Breath, where his background is a thief. All he does is he likes to steal stuff. He doesn't even keep anything, he just wants to prove Grab that he it can. And throw it. Like, he steals it to the point where he, he'll show up to the guard, like, your security's bad. There you go. <laughs> he's like kind of like the um. In today, he's kind of like the hacker that gets into a sit like uh, to get the job <laughs> to get the job and be like, hey, I hacked this. You need to improve your security. And they go, oh my god. Because originally, when I was telling you about the character, you're like, is he chaotic, stupid? And we we're like, and, and this is where you use the same example of like, would you try and steal the cr- the crown off the king's head while you talk to him? And it was like, no, he'd think about doing it. But he's not dumb enough to try and do it. Yeah. Like it, it's there's many different ways to do it. Just the stealing the crown on the king's head is the easiest thing because it, 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 it's just the easiest way to think about it. If you have to, if you have to sit there and think, if I did that, would it be dumb? <laughs> For the sake of dumb, right? Then that's chaotic stupid. But if you go, I if I did that, for the sake of this end goal with this in mind because of this reasoning, and it checks out, that can be a dumb decision, right? but it's not chaotic stupid. I think the big difference people need to realize is everyone hears that it's a game, but it's not like, you know, you're playing Skyrim or Fallout. You just reload that save state. Exactly. And that's the problem I think people most have. Like, oh, it'll be fine. I'll just restart. It, you're gonna find he will out, restart a new character. Yes, a new character. Your DM's not gonna be like, all right, fine, we'll go back to the last point because you made that mistake. No, DM's gonna be like, well, your character's dead. 
Sorry about that. See you next Friday. And that's where <laughs> yeah. that's why we talk about the good role play versus bad role play. Doing that can totally ruin your synergy with your friends right. or with the other mm-hmm. players. So then you they won't be like, okay, you don't need to come back. Like we don't want to deal with this anymore. Which right. can be so awkward. I've had to do that with people where we'd like, don't come back. We don't want you because you don't you're you're playing the you're game. You're causing more problems than you are. We're not getting anything. We're not doing anything because the way you're role playing is just causing chaos for the sake of chaos. you think it's funny, right? So that that's good role play is taking objectivity and reasoning and putting that into your character in the situation. You can think you can if you have a battle map, you can go okay. I can go this many spaces and do that and get out of harm's way. But if your character has a love affinity with another player mm-hmm. like then their, their player their characters like love each other and they're like uh, have an affinity for each other you wouldn't your character wouldn't go well if i go 50 feet that way i'll be outside the range no he'd go i'm going to it's dumb but i'm going to jump in front and take the hit mm-hmm. because that is everyone would be like that's stupid you're taking damage for no reason but in chaotic or whatever lawful or whatever role playing you're doing it would make sense to protect the one you care about Right, and because we've seen it all the time with our campaign with Sorn. Sorn is the barbarian, but he's also the mo- he's very, very protective. Most emotional. He's the most emotional and protective. Yeah, right. So it'll be like, oh no, like even if something is simple, whether it's Cal or Leon or Lear, like some of them, like Lyran is very capable of taking a hit. She is a fighter. She has the HP. But if Sorn sees like, oh look, the dragon's about to attack Lyran, Sorn will run over and put himself in front of her, even though like as players we all know. She'll be fine for that time. Sorn, as a character, is super protective. I have to do everything I can. Right. And so, as as players, we're like, that's a dumb move. It's like, however, that is the role-playing aspect. But not to a point where we're like, Tristan, don't come back anymore. You're causing problems. It's more of, okay, so now we have to reset. Like, we have to think about the battle strategy mm-hmm. in that sense. Right. So, there's, there's an infinite number of situations where that happens. Right. I mean, because, like, recently we had it where, uh, in our campaign... Uh, Zeke's character Leon was accidentally leaving or putting out knowledge that we <laughs> didn't need to. And as players in that moment were frustrated, we're like, dude, what the heck are you doing? You're screwing us here. But Leon... But Leon as a character doesn't have the knowledge of these things. Hasn't been through it. Right. Or hasn't, even even Zeke as a character doesn't know about everything. So, I mean, so it's not like he's doing it. We're all like, oh no, what have you you're done to us? to troll us. He's more of the character and player don't fully have like the weight to yeah. everything they're saying, right? Um, like some things. Now that you told him, he's more more guarded with things. He understands the things you guys have gone through together. Yes, he's he doesn't, very he doesn't, he's well aware. But the things that you you've told him and that he does, he's like, oh, you're telling people, like, because he's in character. He's the newest of the group, mm-hmm. so he's like, and he's known you guys trust him, but are still provisional with him. Mm-hmm. So his character's like, oh, you're telling me of all people. So mm-hmm. I guess this is free information, right? And so then that goes to the after everyone being like. The players being like, or the characters being like, no. <laughs> what have you done? Why? Why so, did you do this? So yeah, it, it's it's taking the the logical objectivity and um, reasonable doubt, for, uh, like with what you're doing and what you think as a player versus what your character would do in game. You see a dragon. You as a player would go. I, I wouldn't want to fight that. I would personally run. Or let's say you're a barbarian. I have enough stats. I'm strong enough. I can do that. But your character could be made in a way that's like, you're afraid of things that are twice your size. So your barbarian would go, it's way more than twice my size. I'm bouncing. Right. Yeah. I mean, th- again, it is where it comes to knowing that character pretty backwards and forwards. Make a note card. Make a flash card. Yeah, Make by all thing. means. If you need to have it in front of you just so you can go, okay, how would I feel at this time versus this time versus this time? Then that's fine. The, your phone was like, I agree. Yes, it was. Um, but so, it, like, I have notes. DMs have notes on characters. Yes. On how they act, on how they speak. Unless you're, unless they're, you describe a bar and someone's like, I want to go talk to that weird person over there, and you don't have something pre- like pre-made for this character, make it up on the spot if you need to, and then write it down immediately. Right. Yeah. Or I mean, have a list, a pool of information that you can just go, okay, let me just draw this. This is this character now. Or, like, make yeah. something where if you want to add something random for yourself to challenge yourself as a DM and make the world a little bit more random, mm-hmm. make a stack of cards, make a list, and right. randomly pick one, and then go from there. One of the most helpful DM things that I was reading about was was taking a list of different 
race names like so these are names for tieflings these are names for dragonborn and just having a list on you at all times because god knows whenever they might want to go talk to you know the random dragonborn that's sitting across the bar and you don't have anything prepared for that well hey guess what you got a list right there darzu and rick is now a thing thing, and there's a reason that there's there's npcs right or just like random npc stats you know stuff like that i mean that's more for the dm side of things but it can be not everyone needs to be an epic level hero right i know that's not role-playing but I'm just laying it Well, out. I mean, yeah. The yeah. big thing to remember is uh, where, especially you and I have talked about this, uh, where when it comes to D&D, you're not playing the protagonist from a video game or an anime or something like that. Because um, those are the kind of people that get wrecked. <laughs> I'm, hello, ba- patron of the bar. Shut up. <laughs> oh, but I'm the hero. I don't know you. <laughs> Look at my cool anime hair. <laughs> don't care. <laughs> Your hair's stupid. Like Get things, the tomatoes. Like things like that. You're playing a character that lives in this world. Whether your character has a higher meaning, that's fine. Until your character becomes renowned. Mm-hmm. He you is are just, just a dude. Yes. <laughs> I mean, and even if you have your character being the, the son of like someone who's... Uh, you know, world famous. That's fine. You still have to remember that character still has to live in this world. Yeah. Uh, like even let's, let's say that you're the prince of some mighty king, and you walk into a bar and somewhere Not- outside, you, like they're just they're like you walk into a bar, they're gonna be like, "Hey yo," and you're gonna be like, "I would demand the finest things." Yeah. Like you gotta pay, kid. Yeah. They're gonna be like, but, "What?" But I'm the king. I am the king's son. I don't care. I mean, that kind. <laughs> I feel like that kind of goes for Cal. Like Cal's mm. dad is a demon guy you know and Lord it's like Dwight. doesn't doesn't mean that like she sits there and she's like well my daddy's gonna kill you you know what i mean like it's it's one of those things where it's like well, even you're, if you're not playing that character you just not know that it's not gonna world. always work in your benefit you're never yeah. gonna you're not gonna be this anime protagonist who's gonna because a lot of it is gonna come down to the rolls of the dice and this is where as a player you'll find things like that frustrating oh. There's nothing more frustrating than knowing that you're a uh, like an eight foot tall Goliath barbarian who should have all the strength in the world, and then rolling a one, and all of a sudden you know your punch that does connect goes boo. Yeah. It's like oh, what do you mean? It, like I just punched a halfling in the face. It should be thrown across the world. Yeah, but you barely clipped it. What do you mean I barely? Clipped? I'm, I'm proficient in fighting. Sorry, oh. the dice decided that. Yeah. Like um, it there, there's also. Taking like the logical, if you go into a bar and go, I demand this, and you're in like a skeezy part of town, everyone's gonna go, Rich boy over here has got tons of money, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen of us in this bar, and one of him. Mm-hmm. I say we buy ourselves some drinks, boys. And that's if yeah. you, being that player, you do not have plot armor, you do not have protagonist protection, you can die. Just as easily as that goblin you killed. (laughs) If 15 dudes walk up on you and just start wailing on you, yeah, you're going to take damage. It's not like you're going to be like, well, I'm this important person. I'm here to save the world. Yeah, you can have an important thing, but don't role play as if you're untouchable. And even if your character is somebody important in this world, just remember important people die too. Yes. Important people have enemies. A lot of them. Now, the the one last thing I want to touch on before we kind of wrap this up is a great thing that you can do to help you get used to playing, especially if you're looking to be a DM and you want to get used to being able to play a different character kind of on the spot, are one-shots. One shots are, are uh, again are short campaigns, usually one, two, three, maybe. No sessions. more than three sessions. No more than three sessions. You know that or you're starting a, a You're starting a mini campaign. <laughs> yeah. Um one shots are a great opportunity for you to even just randomly make a character or think of how to play another character or something like that to kind of get you into because since they're also very short, you have to get that personality across pretty quickly. In a fast amount of time. So yeah. even if you're only half thinking of it, it's still like let's say that you're doing a one shot that's only one or two sessions and you're like, all right. Uh, I need to figure out his personality to make sense for a little bit. You don't have to like go into it going like my character's favorite color is this, and I know this all the time. You can go in going okay, like he's pretty money oriented. He's um, he's self reliant. He's this, and you can go in there with you know whether it's a voice or not. You kind of have that idea of what a character is, that character is. Yeah. So one shots are a great opportunity in different to situations. Push your boundary to push yes. that level. Just a tick up. Or right. in a different direction, or to try something new. It's all. You don't have to worry about a one shot. You being like a, a super timid, nondescript character during campaign, and then a one shot. You have to be like epic level, able to do everything a character needs to role play. Mm-hmm. Just step they're, it up. they're definitely great help for, like you said, pushing your boundaries and trying new things. Like if you predominantly play a barbarian, a one shot's a great opportunity to maybe do something. 
maybe a little less. Like maybe you're like, okay, let me go fighter or um, a monk or something like that. something similar enough that makes sense. Or you, even if you want to, and you really want to, you can go like, okay, I'm gonna go from a barbarian in my main cam- main campaign for this one shot. And be a sorcerer. Like <laughs> we didn't really touch on it. We touched on it when we made the classes. Is that classes kind of help dictate how you act? Right. There Especially are certain with, like, things that make and stuff yeah, like that. There's certain things that make sense for your class. Mm-hmm. So if you're role playing a wizard, you wouldn't be like, "I'm rough and tough. I'll take you in an arm wrestling competition because I'm so strong." You're a hyper intelligent being. You can pretend. Right. You can act like it, but your character wouldn't be holistically motivated because yeah. that's not how. I don't want to tell you how wizards are, but that's not how the class works. Right. So it would be, be an interesting on dynamic. dice rolls. Yeah. If you have like an, eight, an 18 in strength, right. maybe arm wrestle a few people. Like <laughs> the, 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 the dynamic between functionality versus role play is a fine line that for a cohesive game you need to walk. Yes. If you want to try and yeah. to, to counteract the, the, the stereotypes and the things people do, you can certainly be that rough and tough wizard. Mm-hmm. But you're also, you learned your magic. Mm-hmm. So having a character being like, well, I was born with this, that is diametrically opposed to wizards. Yes. So it wouldn't make much sense. Right. Right. So, so things like that. Yeah. So just kind of as an overarching thing, we've talked about the spectrum as far as very minimal role play to be going ham. Uh <laughs> Um, and if you're in that spectrum, that's where I, I truly mean there's no wrong way to role play. If you're kind of in that spectrum, that's great. If you're just... And you're trying for cohesive in the game and cohesive right. with your party and friends, great. If you are role playing to fight that power and go against the grain to troll people and make a mess... Not good. Right. I mean, because even in that good role-playing, you can still do certain things like troll players and troll NPCs. There are funny things that you can do. There are, there are right do. ways to do it. If you are trolling for the sense of just Being that causing, long war for the troll just to be that thing. Yeah. Then that's not role-playing. That's just kind of being a dick player. Yep. I wouldn't even call that role-playing at that point. So that's that's where I kind of sit where to, as far as when I mean there's no wrong way to role-play. You can do zero, you know... Costumes, clothing, dice, uh, you know, voice. Nothing. You can do none of that, but you try to be a bit more descriptive about your character, but you're still trying to stick to that true heart of the character. Great. You can go ham, show up in full costume, um, with a voice, with everything matching, and, you know, full of the side of the spectrum. Great. If you're somewhere in the middle, that's still great. As long The whole, whole point of it is to play the game, have a good time, have, play a character in a world, and have them be realistic you're supposed to it's supposed to be a different reality for you to be in a new um, reality a new reality <laughs> <laughs> then <laughs> sorry inside here um so i think that kind of covers a great deal of about role playing again starting anywhere on that field is perfectly okay there's nothing that says you have to be super gary old. gygax level of of D lord right <laughs> so especially when you even see it with uh with the live stream ones you if you watch something like Critical Role, don't go into it thinking you have to be at that. I'm going to be the new Liam O'Brien. You can try. You can if that's if that's your ultimate goal, that's fine. Work there. Yes. Don't expect and don't get dis, disheartened, disheartened if you go in and you go. Well, none of what I did worked. Right. That's fine. And again, uh, it, we we've talked about this a lot in the beginning where. No matter how long you've been doing it, there's always places to move up. And again, when you look at some of these people that like on the live streams or the shows and stuff, these people have been playing for ten plus years, Edition. if not their entire life. Yeah. And there's not like how long have you guys been playing? Only about two years. Yeah. So yeah. Like there are people who like me who have been playing for more fingers than I have. <laughs> um, and then you guys who are still on first two. Like mm-hmm. there's but you guys role play enough where it's a cohesive thing. Right. You guys play with like do well together. Mm-hmm. You understand how each other role play, how the table role play, how I do it, and that makes for dynamic role play ranges, mm-hmm. but a cohesive unit. Yeah. Right. And just remember, you know, don't be too hard on yourself, especially if you're just starting out in this. Like don't put too much pressure on yourself. Don't don't if you wind up doing a chaotic stupid moment or if you wind up having like a lone wolf dark knight moment like it's like it's fine it's all happen, you can do it is happens learn. like all you can do is learn from it and like pick it up and move on and then try something else or if you find a level of role play that you prefer and you want to stick with let's say that you want to stay on that one end of not doing a whole lot but you're being cohesive you're true to your character and everything, yeah. that's perfectly fine if you yeah. never if you go like man 
I don't even really want to do the silly voices or anything. Cool. Don't By have all means, to. Don't have to. Totally all on you. A lot of people don't. <laughs> a lot of people don't. So uh, find what works well for you. Again, the big thing is just try to find those characters, to at least to a certain degree. Like with one shots, you're not going to go ham. Right. <laughs> or not go gonna, ham. It's a one or shot. Or go ham. Yeah, it's a What's one shot. What's the going to happen? The character dies? Cool. If anything, it's just being creativity outside of the game itself. Yeah. So what D&D is all about. Yeah. So that's how uh, role playing kind of works in a nutshell to some degree. Again, we're not experts by any means of how to role play. No. Um, talk to your local dominatrix. Uh <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Talk to your talk to your local uh, talk to DMs. Adventures D- League and DMs and other people who play D and D for a while. Right, DM your DM. There are and <laughs> or DM our DM. Yes, um, please do. And I'm if still you're waiting. looking, if you're looking to talk to more people or even just observe it, you see it more and more now that bookshops like you know Second Charles or uh, Borders or yeah. Books a Million. Or other games places, they're starting to bring D and D sessions into it. So even if you want to go, so and, cool. Uh, or if you can find other people playing, like yeah. if you have a couple of people, like man, we play. Like I'm looking into it, or hey, can I watch your guys' session to see how you guys role play? Most groups are gonna be like, yeah, that's fine, because um, all we want to do is get more and more people into it. Yeah, bring more into the cult. I mean, the game. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, so yeah, so role playing. Uh, if you're in, if you're if you're trying, you're not really doing it wrong. So uh, so the next time we uh, we'll see you guys uh, in whatever role you guys are in. Detention dismissed. <laughs> <laughs>